Hello everyone and welcome to Start Your Business, Change Your Life, brought to you by womenforchange.info. I'm now I'm the CEO and owner of Women for Change and the reason I wanted to start this podcast was to be able to help people who felt like they wanted to start their own business but didn't know where to start, how to start and generally felt overwhelmed with the um, online world and how to navigate it. I have uh, been in the online marketing uh, business for around about the past seven years now. I help small to medium sized businesses find their place online, how they should communicate with their clients, where they should communicate with their clients, create a social media uh, presence um, and also find the best ways to market to those clients and really just understand marketing and how it can fit your particular business. My passion is helping women realize the potential of being able to start their own business, to have personal and financial freedom. That's what I love. That's why I started Women for Change, even though it started as more of an entertainment business blog to put the spotlight on women in the entertainment and business industry who were trying to do positive things and make a change. I really want to put great information out there that's able to help people. So I wanted to start this podcast because I love podcasts. I I'm a busy mom, a busy working mom and podcasts for me if I'm uh, with my daughter, if I'm washing up, if I'm going for a run, if I'm driving, if I'm tidying up, if I'm working, I can always listen to a podcast and let it play. Um, it's just perfect for me. It's a way that I can consume uh, great content and information whilst doing other things. And I hope that I'm able to help somebody else out there the way that I feel um, lots of different podcasts have helped me. Now, this is my first episode and a little insider uh, information about my millionth take. So please bear with me. I know by episode, you know, 5, 10, 100, I should be a pro, but there's going to be lots of ums, ahs and all different sounds <laughs> that, um, you know, you might not hear from more of the polished podcasters. Uh, now that I have given you a quick brief intro, I do want to go into the main topic of what I want to talk about today. And that is Instagram. Um, I know that creating an Instagram page is kind of like um, an easy go-to thing for a lot of people who want to start a business online. They may have, you know, uh, thinking of starting an online boutique or they just have their business in mind and put their information in their bio and think, okay, let me try out, you know, my business idea on Instagram. Uh, Now, as I'm recording this, Yesterday, Instagram made some changes to their algorithm. Um, it's their code of how they, uh, of how Instagram works, uh, which is changing things up a bit. Which to me makes me feel like they're going they're going to be going the way of Facebook pages, taking away um, your control with your audience and putting putting it back in their hands which ultimately means I think that they're going to uh, start charging you to communicate to the followers that you've built up. Uh, Neither here nor there at the moment, but that is something that's probably going to come soon. So, 
do you feel like you're spending time on Instagram but you're still not growing your followers? I know when I started out on Instagram, I feel like I was, you know, following a lot of what these, you know, so-called Instagram experts were saying and things just weren't sticking. I hate when I have to be too regimented about anything, you know, post three times a day, do this, do that. It just feels unnatural. And to me, social media is meant to be a reflection of you and your business. And it's meant to be a little bit, you know, more... um, fun and a way for your audience to see you and your personality and your business's personality so the regimented uh um opinions of others was was getting to me but there are some things that you do need to do in order to um to get some success on instagram um those things I've I've uh whittled it down to three three things um so I know that when I first started to purpose purposely build my Instagram audience some weeks were great and some were not 95% of the time my results were tied to the work I put in like Facebook and Pinterest it's so easy to be distracted when you're on these platforms we've all been there right one minute you just happen to click on uh, the discover page and 20 minutes later you're looking at how amazing someone else's page is There's no harm in that, but I'll give you a few tips to make sure the time that you spend on Instagram yields positive results for your business. So, point one, make a plan and stick to it. If you plan on posting once a day or three times a day, stick to your plan. Consistency is the biggest pathway to success in growing your audience. So, It's simply just that you don't have to be so regimented and think, okay, I have to post five things a day no matter what. Do what is comfortable for you. But whatever you do, stick to it. Number two, it goes down in the comments. Since you're scanning through different pictures and pages, why not comment? Make yourself known in a non-promotional way. What's even better is if you're commenting on pics that are related to your target audience. So um, I don't mean just going to like popular celebrity pages and commenting. I mean, that could help. But if you um, are a fitness trainer and there is a smoothie page or something like that and you comment and you give a little bit of your insight don't then say and follow me on my page just give your comment people will if they like what you've said people will naturally go to your page like some of your pictures and follow you so there's no reason to be over promotional let social media be social you don't have to push it people will um will naturally gravitate towards you if you know, they feel that energy. And number three, hashtags are still queen as of now. Anyway, hashtags are the way for your post to be discovered by people who aren't already following you. Make sure you are using hashtags that will be found. Try to avoid making hashtags that are so personal, no one will be looking for it, except your branded hashtag which you would keep you would do your branded hashtag to keep a collection of your posts. So for example, if you are a um online clothing boutique, you want to use popular fashion tags um that people will be searching. You don't want to put hashtag oh my g this is so cute. I can't believe it because you know who is uh, it's a cute hashtag but who's searching for it um if you're stuck on what hashtags to use a quick tip would be to 
uh, see what's trending on the Discover page. See if anything relates to your business that you can use. Also, you can research on the hashtag page, searching something that you think would uh, be useful. And if there's a lot of posts with that hashtag, it might be a good idea to use that hashtag. If there's only, you know, one or a thousand, I would give it a miss. Um, for a long term strategy, I would use uh, I would research on sites like tags for likes dot com to find out popular hashtags for your category. So those are my three top tips for trying to get the most out of steadily growing your Instagram following. These aren't those super turbo, get 10,000 followers in 30 days. These are just, you're just starting out. You are just trying to get a feel for Instagram, um, for your business. And you just want to get a steady um, amount of followers. But who are your targeted audience? I hope this help helps, guys. And I am looking forward to more podcasts in the future please visit womenforchange.info for more of my blogs and you can follow me on instagram at womenforchangeinfo on snapchat at womenforchange on twitter at womenforchange and i look forward to speaking to you soon